You heard about Bitcoin, right? But today, you will find out five crazy facts about it that more than 99% of people don't know, even people that are involved in world of crypto. And as every video on Bitcoin Academy, this one is also beginner friendly. So even if you don't understand anything about crypto, you will after this video ends. Fact number one, Bitcoin's inflation rate is now officially lower than the inflation rate of gold. Sounds crazy, right? But it's true. On April 20th, 2024, something called the halving took place. If you're new to crypto, a halving is an event where the number of new Bitcoins mined and released into circulation is cut in half. It happens approximately every four years, and it's hard-coded into Bitcoin's protocol to make sure the supply remains limited. So, what happened during this latest halving? Well, before it, miners were earning 6.25 BTC every time they successfully mined a new block. After the halving, that reward dropped to just 3.125 BTC. It means that the annual supply growth of Bitcoin has now dropped to less than 1% per year. To put that in perspective, let's talk about gold for a moment. Gold's long-term supply growth rate hovers around 1.6%. That's the rate at which new gold gets mined and added to the existing supply. So mathematically speaking, Bitcoin is now officially scarcer than gold. But why does this matter? Isn't Bitcoin just a digital asset? Why compare it to gold at all? Well, the answer lies in what people value. For centuries, gold has been prized for its rarity and stability as a store of value. Bitcoin, however, is increasingly being seen the same way. Investors want assets that are hard to inflate. They don't want their wealth diluted by excessive printing or mining. This lower inflation rate is monumental because it solidifies Bitcoin's position as a deflationary asset. While traditional currencies like US dollar can be printed infinitely and even gold continues to be mined, Bitcoin's supply is fixed at 21 million coins. No more, no less. And now that the new issuance rate is even lower than gold's, it reinforces Bitcoin's status as digital gold. But wait, there's more. This development didn't just come out of nowhere. It's part of Bitcoin's fundamental design. When Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin, they wanted a currency that resisted inflation and they bake that concept right into the protocol. The predictable halving events are one of the reasons why Bitcoin's price tends to increase in the long run. Some people worry that lower inflation means less incentive for miners. After all, if they're getting fewer Bitcoins as a reward, won't that discourage mining? The answer is nuanced. While the block reward drops, the transaction fees collected by miners can increase as the network gets busier. Plus, as Bitcoin becomes scarcer and more valuable, each BTC mined becomes more significant. So what's the takeaway for you, especially if you're just starting out with crypto? Understanding Bitcoin's inflation rate gives you insight into why long-term investors are so bullish on it. And if you want to know what term bullish means, it means that you are believing that the asset has a bright future in terms of value. If you want to learn about crypto-related terms, make sure to check this video. I explained entire crypto dictionary, link is down in description. Getting back to Bitcoin. Investors see it as a hedge against traditional finance systems that can print money at will. And with inflation eating away at the value of fiat, having an asset that is mathematically guaranteed to become scarcer makes a lot of sense. The next time someone tells you that Bitcoin is just a speculative bubble, hit them with this fact. Bitcoin's inflation rate is now lower than gold's. That's not speculation. That's built into the code, and it's happening right now. And just like that, we are moving to fact number two, which can blow your mind even more. You've probably heard stories about Bitcoin's mysterious creator, Satoshi Nakamoto. Some people think he's an individual, others believe it's a group, but the truth is, no one really knows who or what Satoshi is. Yet the most shocking part isn't just that the identity is still unknown, it's the fact that Satoshi holds a massive Bitcoin fortune that has remained untouched for over a decade. Imagine this. In the early days of Bitcoin, between 2009 and 2010, Satoshi mined roughly 1.1 million BTC. Back then, Bitcoin was practically worthless, and mining was something you could do on a regular computer. Fast forward to today, and those coins are worth over $110 billion. Yes, you heard that right. $110 billion just sitting there, untouched. Here's the twist. Despite that enormous fortune, none of Satoshi's coins have ever moved. That means that around 5% of the entire supply of Bitcoin is essentially locked up, not circulating, not being spent, and not being sold. For context, that's more than the entire market cap of many top cryptocurrencies. But why does this matter? The thing is, if Satoshi, or whoever controls those wallets, 
were to start moving or selling those coins, it could send shockwaves through the crypto market. Imagine waking up to news that 1.1 million BTC is suddenly being sold. It could trigger a massive price crash, or at least create intense speculation and fear. Yet, after more than a decade, there hasn't been a single sign of movement. Some people believe that Satoshi's disappearance and the untouched coins are deliberate, as if to prove that Bitcoin isn't controlled by any one person or entity. It's as if Satoshi intentionally stepped back to let Bitcoin evolve on its own, free from centralized control or influence. Others, however, speculate that Satoshi may have passed away or lost access to the keys. It wouldn't be the first time someone has permanently lost their Bitcoins. There are countless stories of people accidentally throwing away hard drives or forgetting their private keys. But considering the technical prowess of Bitcoin's creator, it's hard to imagine Satoshi being careless with such a significant amount of BTC. Regardless of the reason, the fact remains, one of the largest Bitcoin fortunes ever amassed remains untouched. And while it may sound odd to some, this could actually be a good thing. The immovable nature of those coins adds a layer of stability to the Bitcoin market. As long as they stay dormant, investors can rest a little easier, knowing that there's no looming whale sell-off threat. This also speaks to a larger philosophical question about Bitcoin itself. In a world where money is constantly moved, traded, and manipulated, the idea of such an immense fortune sitting idle challenges our assumptions about wealth and value. Maybe Satoshi's silence is a final lesson in the true spirit of decentralization. Bitcoin belongs to everyone, not just to one creator. Now we mentioned Bitcoin supply is 21 million, but if we exclude these 1.1 million, then supply drops to 19.9 million, making Bitcoin even more scarce. But even that is not all, and you will understand why, because we are diving in fact number three. We talked about the Bitcoin fortune that is sitting untouched, but now we are diving into something even more unexpected. Did you know that Satoshi's 1.1 million is not the only sitting Bitcoin that can't be touched? Yes, that's right. Millions of Bitcoins are gone forever, never to be recovered, and it all comes down to one simple fact. People lose their private keys, forget their passwords, or simply throw away devices that store their coins. Imagine this. You buy some Bitcoin back in the day when it was just a few cents, store it on your old laptop, and then years later, you decide to upgrade. You clean out your old electronics, and without thinking twice, that laptop ends up in a garbage can. Now, years later, you find out that the Bitcoin on that device is worth millions. Too late, it's gone. Chain analysis experts estimate that between 3.7 million and 7.8 million Bitcoins are permanently lost. That is somewhere between 17% and 37% of the total supply that will ever exist. These are real coins that once belonged to people who mined them, bought them, or received them as payments. The reasons are as varied as the stories themselves. Some people lost access to their wallets because they forgot their passwords. Others had their hard drives crash, and without a backup, those coins are effectively locked away forever. Then, there are those famous stories of people throwing away hard drives containing bitcoins like the guy from the UK who has been digging through a landfill for years trying to recover his lost fortune. But here is the wild part. This massive loss actually makes Bitcoin scarcer than intended. Remember, there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins mined. If millions of those are gone forever, it means the effective supply is much lower than that. This built-in scarcity booster could potentially drive the price up even more as demand continues to grow, and more investors realize this fact. Think of it like a rare collector's item. If half of the items are destroyed or lost, the remaining pieces become more valuable. The same logic applies to Bitcoin. As more people realize that a significant portion of the supply is gone forever, the perception of scarcity increases, making the remaining Bitcoins more desirable. Now, some skeptics argue that these numbers are exaggerated, that not all of the estimated lost coins are actually gone. Maybe some are just lying dormant, waiting for their owners to remember their keys. But even if a fraction of that estimate is true, it still represents a huge chunk of the total supply. For those just getting into crypto, here's why this matters. It's important to understand that Bitcoin's fixed supply is not just about the 21 million limit. Real-world factors like human error and lost keys play a huge role in shaping the actual circulating supply. That is why some investors see Bitcoin as a deflationary asset, not just because of the halving events, but also because of these unexpected losses. So, 
To put it in perspective, we said that because of Satoshi, supply is actually 19.9 million BTC. Now remove another 5 million, which is the average estimation of lost Bitcoins, and we get the 14.9 million supply, which is even more insane. So next time someone tells you Bitcoin is not scarce enough, hit them with this fact. A massive percentage of Bitcoin is already gone, making the rest even more valuable. Enough about supply and inflation, it is time to dive in real juice. Let me ask you something. When you think about Bitcoin, do you picture just digital money or do you think of something more creative? Because Bitcoin is no longer just about currency, it has entered the world of digital art and collectibles. Yes, you heard that right. Bitcoin now has NFTs and they are called ordinals. If you are wondering how that even works, stick around because this is one of the most surprising Bitcoin facts you probably haven't heard of. First, let's break it down. NFTs, or non-fungible tokens, are unique digital assets that represent ownership of a specific item or piece of content, like digital art, music, or even real estate in the metaverse. Up until recently, Ethereum was the king of NFTs. It is where all the major collections like Bored Apes and CryptoPunks lived. But now Bitcoin is stepping into the NFT game, and it's doing it in a unique way. This whole thing started in early 2023 with something called ordinal inscriptions. What does that mean? Basically, it allows users to inscribe data onto a single Satoshi, which is the smallest unit of Bitcoin, 100 millionth of a BTC. This data can be anything from an image to a piece of text. And once it is inscribed, it becomes a permanent part of the Bitcoin blockchain. Think of it like engraving your name on a tiny gold coin, but in a digital sense. The interesting part is how this changes the perception of Bitcoin. Traditionally, Bitcoin has been seen as a digital store of value or a form of money. But with ordinals, it becomes a canvas for digital creators. Imagine an artist wanting to make their work permanent and immutable. They can now inscribe their art onto a Satoshi, making it part of Bitcoin forever. It is almost poetic how the most durable and secure blockchain now also preserves art and culture. But why would anyone want to do this on Bitcoin when Ethereum and other blockchains already have established NFT ecosystems? The answer lies in Bitcoin's unparalleled security and decentralization. Unlike Ethereum, which is moving to proof of stake, Bitcoin remains on proof of work, which many argue makes it more secure and resistant to censorship. Plus, since Bitcoin has been around the longest and has the highest level of decentralization, any data stored on its blockchain is considered almost indestructible. There is also the cool factor of being part of Bitcoin history. Early ordinal inscriptions are already being treated as digital relics. People are speculating that the first batches of these inscribed Satoshis might become collector's items, similar to how people value early tweets or the first ever YouTube video. The idea that a piece of digital art could live on the same chain as Satoshi Nakamoto's original Bitcoin transaction gives it an almost mythical status. Now, there is a bit of controversy here. Bitcoin purists argue that ordinals are clogging up the blockchain with non-monetary data. They say Bitcoin should remain strictly a currency and not venture into the world of NFTs. On the other hand, there are those who believe this new use case breathes fresh life into the ecosystem, attracting artists and collectors who previously ignored Bitcoin as just digital gold. Whether you love it or hate it, you can't deny that NFTs on Bitcoin are making waves. Some see it as an evolution, others as a distraction. But either way, it has sparked a new conversation around what Bitcoin can be. It's not just money, it's also a cultural artifact now, recording human creativity alongside financial transactions. But NFTs were just the start. In 2024, a developer named Casey Rotermore introduced another protocol on Bitcoin's blockchain, which is called Rune Protocol. And just like that, runes were born. Runes represent tokens on Bitcoin blockchain, same as Solana's meme coins. Bitcoin also has a meme coin platform, and it is growing more with each day. Of course, there are problems to this, which are high fee costs and transaction speed. But new solutions are emerging every single day. And we may soon be witnessing Bitcoin's complete takeover of not just NFTs, but meme coins also. Never forget, Bitcoin is father of crypto. The first, the biggest, the greatest. And finally, we came to the most insane fact for today. And this one might just change the way you think about crypto transactions. You have probably heard that Bitcoin transactions can be slow and expensive, especially when the network gets crowded. But what if I told you that there is a way to make Bitcoin transactions almost instant and practically free? That is where the Lightning Network comes in. Let's start with the basics. 
Bitcoin itself was designed to be a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer payment system. But as more people started using it, the network became congested, leading to higher fees and longer transaction times. This was a problem because, in theory, Bitcoin was supposed to be faster and cheaper than traditional financial systems. Here enters the Lightning Network. The Lightning Network is a second-layer solution built on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. Think of it as an express lane for Bitcoin transactions. Instead of recording every single transaction directly on the blockchain, Lightning allows users to open private payment channels between each other. Once the channel is open, they can send as many transactions as they want back and forth without touching the main blockchain. Only when they close the channel does the final balance get recorded on the Bitcoin ledger. This approach has a massive impact on speed and cost. Since transactions within the channel are not broadcasted to the entire network, they can be completed in a fraction of a second. Fees are also drastically reduced, often costing just a few satoshis, which is less than a cent. This makes it possible to send tiny payments, even as small as a few cents, without worrying about being charged more in fees than the transaction itself. One of the coolest parts of the Lightning Network is that it opens up new use cases for Bitcoin. For example, imagine buying a cup of coffee with Bitcoin. On the regular blockchain, the transaction might take 10 minutes to confirm and could cost more than the coffee itself in fees. But with Lightning, the transaction is instant and practically free. This makes Bitcoin far more practical for everyday purchases. Now, you might be wondering, if Lightning is so great, why is not everyone using it? Well, there are a few reasons. First, setting up a Lightning node requires some technical know-how, which can be intimidating for beginners. Second, the technology is still relatively new and evolving. While major wallets and exchanges are starting to support it, adoption has been slower than some hoped. However, progress is being made every day and more services are integrating Lightning as it becomes more user-friendly. One of the most exciting developments happened in May 2025, when the Lightning Network's public capacity topped 7,000 BTC, which is roughly $700 million at current prices. This shows that more people and businesses are trusting the technology, and it is scaling up to handle a greater volume of transactions. The more capacity the network has, the more reliable and efficient it becomes. There are also innovative applications being built on top of Lightning. For example, micropayments are now possible, allowing content creators to get paid per view or per click without needing to go through traditional platforms that take huge cuts. There is also the potential for integrating Lightning with streaming services, where users can pay per second of video watched rather than buying a full subscription up front. Of course, no technology is perfect, and the Lightning Network does have its challenges. For one, channels need to be funded with Bitcoin, which means users have to lock up some of their coins while the channel is open. Also, if one party tries to cheat by closing the channel with an outdated balance, the network has mechanisms to detect this and penalize the dishonest user. While this makes Lightning secure, it also means that users need to be aware of how the system works to avoid mistakes. Despite these challenges, the potential of the Lightning Network to revolutionize Bitcoin payments is undeniable. It addresses one of the biggest criticisms of Bitcoin, which is its scalability problem, and it does so in a way that stays true to Bitcoin's decentralized ethos. As more people adopt Lightning, we could see a future where Bitcoin becomes not just a store of value, but also a fast and efficient means of everyday payment. So, the next time someone tells you that Bitcoin is too slow and too expensive to use as money, hit them with this fact. The Lightning Network is making instant, low-cost Bitcoin payments a reality, and it is already changing the way people transact. We have come to the end of today's video. I can see that you are keen on learning about World of Crypto. If yes, then make sure to check one of these two videos on the screen. You see, we are on a brink of mass adoption of crypto, and educating yourself about it before others do can change your life. It changed mine completely. Hope you found this video helpful. If yes, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and comment your thoughts. See you in our next video.